Hello everyone, and welcome back to our Austria Iron Man campaign. Things are going okay-ish so far. I am, of course, no powerhouse at this game, but we have increased our production. We are sort of balancing out some of our uh, goods requirements and other such things, starting to build a couple farms to get people away from subsistence farming. And we've taken a weird move for Austria and gone colonial, so we will have some colonial possessions building up in Africa. And hopefully these will help us in the late game to get uh, to afford some of the, well, to be able to produce rather some of the goods that we otherwise couldn't produce in mainland Germany. The goal is, of course, still to form Germany, but as it is right now, we can't afford to do this. Um, we don't have the armed forces for it. We don't have the economy to support those armed forces, and uh, well, that means we're going to have to wait. So. My intention is to handle that maybe around 1855, 1860, I think we should be able to manage it. Um, the problem, it's easier to do this with other countries such as, you know, Russia in the Kazakhs, or in the Middle East, or, you know, outside of Europe. But if we get into a war right now without an ally, we could very easily get double or triple teamed and not be able to fight them off, particularly because the Austrian military is not phenomenal. We don't have amazing generals with excellent offensive or defensive capabilities, and right now as it stands we don't have any allies, so we will be taking a look at the politics game today. The French aren't too far from an alliance, and that would be really nice. The thing is, I don't want to have to give them a trade agreement, so let's see. Uh, they would accept an alliance with obligations, so we could do that, or maybe we could get Russia with obligations. I think, quite frankly, I want France, so let's get an alliance here. That's fine, and improved relations will continue with... Well, no, that's that's all we really need for here. We have a lot of diplomatic power, so we may as well use that, I suppose. Could I get a defensive pact? I'm not sure I really care to. Central banking is, of course, from passive technology gain. It's not something we researched ourselves, but it will give a pretty good boost to our monetary situation, and I think it will justify... Uh, increasing our construction sectors just a little bit. So let's go ahead and build those up even more, three more of them in Austria. Uh, of course, this does continue the cycle of import, uh, sorry, input good shortages and expensive government goods, particularly for construction. But it also is the way that we improve the rate at which we can improve our own country. And already in 19, sorry, 1839, just three years after game start, we've added over 10 million to our weekly gross domestic product, which if we take a look at how that compares, Let's take a look here by GDP. France is racing ahead at 56, but they also started with quite a bit more than us. We did, I mean, we didn't start with anything great, but we're kind of keeping pace here. Pushing ahead of Prussia in particular is a nice thing. Uh, looks like France, so France starts with much better text than we do. That is going to be a problem. And you can see our weekly GDP has sort of been a bit more in fits and starts than theirs, but particularly the growth at the end has been very, very nice. Uh, getting some of these farms built, livestock ranches and other things as well, will increase our um, standard of living, decrease some of these radicals, and maybe get us on our way to handling the matter of Hungary. So if we take a look at our government, because I think it's about time to do that, clout has been dropping for the aristocracy, but also like a stone for the armed forces, in part that's because, well, no, they have decent wages now. Interesting. Not really sure what explains that, but <laughs> it's not exactly great. Uh, let's see, so we have 37,000 subsidies from our capitalist building things for us. I like the fact that we're still building up a treasury instead of spending on one. Um, maybe we could do a little bit more construction even. This is a dangerous cycle, but I would like to build even more at the same time, and that is the way to do it particularly if we want to win through exportation. So I, I went through this a little bit during the first episode, I'll just kind of bears repeating. My intention is to attack my opponents economically and militarily should the time come by basically providing them with the goods that they need. And then when we go to war and those trade agreements are canceled, we yank all of that away and they're, they're struggling to maintain any sort of money or any sort of prosperous economy or frankly, decently supplied military. Uh, in order to get anything done. So let's take a look at our markets. And steel has a shortage, but we're building that next. We're also building up a bit more sulfur. We need grocers, that'll increase co uh, st standard of living as well. And we also need more iron, coffee, and wine. So 
coffee I don't think we can do yet I mean look at this we're already getting the opportunity to build things in the colonies tobacco tea silk even dyes which all of this will be pretty wonderful once we have some better flushed out things there I think you know what let's do let's do this let's build uh, I want coffee because I think that would be pretty excellent so well, that was in Austrian South Cameroon which means that we need Austrian South Cameroon to no longer be isolated in order to do that we have to build a port there and the other one was Austrian Niger Delta so let's go to Austrian Niger Delta here and we need another port there as well and yes this did just extend our production queue even further but uh, getting those coffee goods flowing will make people happy and making people happy is sort of the name of the game right because this is the era this is not eu4 where you can just conquer willy-nilly and put down the occasional revolt revolts here destroy your country and this game just like victoria 2 before it is to a certain extent the uh avoid getting revolution simulator in the meantime in terms of geopolitical events egypt and ottomans have gone to war and egypt is winning hands down so uh, this is something we can definitely take advantage of later. Should the Balkans become up for grabs, we'll happily go into it. Serbia and Wallachia right now are guaranteed, or I think they're even puppeted to the Ottomans. Not entirely sure, but this could all be free real estate once we have uh, built up a little bit more power. And I'm not building any military buildings right now. This will put us behind places like France, Prussia, and Russia. But numbers here don't necessarily matter as much as quality. And without a good economy, we won't be able to afford the quality that we need. So um, let's go ahead and build up production a bit more. Now that we, so we've maxed out in Austria, let's start focusing somewhere else. I think we take a look at our goods. We have steel mills that are being built in Southern Transylvania. We have tools, where do we have tools? Istria and Styria. Okay, well, let's build up our construction in Istria. I think that'll be, a good thing and of course because I'm an idiot and I forgot to alt click those are at the bottom so let's go ahead and move them up to the top of our production queue and we are expanding the coffee plants here we are about to solve our access problems to some of our colonies and that will help us uh, there let's take a look at our institutions three weeks until we fully adopt the second level of colonial growth this will help us with our empire building in Africa um, be nice if this game goes well i could do hearts fire and four although i'm not very good at that game and certainly no tori or anything approaching his level of exp expertise with it but uh you know it could be worth something uh technology passive game is getting us nationalism i wanted pharmaceuticals from that general staff is nice it means we can get better armies and we're trying to work through railways so as soon as railways are done I think we'll go over and do pharmaceuticals. I'd like to get some hospitals going to increase our population growth, which right now is pretty lackluster. Um, I was able to get it up to about plus 1%, plus 1.2%, playing as other nations through just good health systems and a little bit better infrastructure there. But I think having some employment will make people happy. I think also having those livestock ranches will, will be a good boon to our markets. Uh, we need grocers. I have not actually queued any sort of grocers, so let's do that because that seems like it's going to be our next goods crisis. And people like food. People, in fact, do not like starving. <laughs> so I think Bex might be a good place for that. We don't have much in Bex so far, so let's go ahead and build. Uh, let's build ten grocers in Bex um, just to keep those prices low for a little while, and then hopefully we'll be able to do something else with that soon. So, small arms up. Mm. Let's get rid of our intelligentsia influence there. Don't particularly like that interest group. Uh, I know it's good for reforms, but I don't particularly like it. We are going to discourage the aristocracy as well. And let's take a look at what that did to our government. Ooh, hey, we have our institution. Very nice. Still 103 bureaucracy to spare as well, which means that we're not in too much trouble. Uh, yeah, so immediate speed increase there is, is very, very nice. Um, okay, so I know it's a bit of 
Well, no, we can keep going for right now. I want to see what happens when these get finished, how much land we can take, but I don't think that'll be a today thing. Probably will take a little bit too long at speed 3, but again, I like the sort of relaxed game that we have going on. Uh, you know what? We could solve our market access problems here. Probably a good idea. So let's just go in here and get a couple additional ports. This will mean that we need uh, more clippers. Uh, Ivory Coast, Windwood Coast. The isolated is basically the same thing as the low market access for right now. We solve it the same way by building ports so that we can provide goods in there. Um, that was Mauritania already. So let's go to Togo and just work down the list. Guinea. And yeah, this, this is circumventing our other sort of ambitions, but as we build our colonial empire, there's going to be more and more uh, incidents with the natives, and we need to be able to access those regions in order to put troops there, and in order to avoid having these colonies basically fail, uh, which, you know, that's, that's not exactly what you want. Um, if we look at our construction queue, 123 weeks for food industries is a little bit too long. Um, but right now, our only good shortage is steel, which we should be working on right after sulfur there. So I think let's actually expand production a bit more. Well, uh, that's risky because we do already have high taxes, and high consumption taxes. We, we risk getting into a deficit spiral where basically you are spending too much for production. You can't match that uh, with any sort of taxation. And because of that, you have to increase taxation, increase consumption taxes, and piss everyone off. And then because you can't match your construction needs, you're not being able to build enough, and then you piss everyone off more. Uh, it can be quite a way to lose a campaign quickly. Oh, more declared interest. Let's do that. So right now we have these regions declared. Um, we could declare an Indonesia. And let's see, can we establish colonies here? Yeah, we might actually be able to. Um, it looks like the Dutch are really going at it, which could be a problem. But if we can get into Pau Pau or into Sulawesi, that could be good. Although hard for us to maintain. Again, if anyone challenged us for those right now, we do not have the admirals to actually accomplish any sort of reasonable defense uh, or supply of those regions. But, uh, well... They don't call it ambitions instead of capabilities for nothing. So it looks like the Egyptian-Ottoman War has completed, and Egypt was greedy. Wow, I would not have taken stuff like this because land borders are nice, but uh, no, yeah, they, they took Constantinople. More power to them. I suppose the island, island of Crete makes some sense because it's always going to be isolated anyway, but if you're going to do that, I would have gone for Cyprus as well, and then maybe gone for Konya or Ottoman Adana. I mean... Shit, there's Egyptian Adana, then Ottoman Adana, so merging that state into one seems like a good idea just for lack of border war, but, you know, AI is gonna AI, and that's how it is in every game, let alone this one. If we take a look at our... yeah, we still have basically no support. Intelligentsia are the only ones, only ones supporting changes in those laws, so eventually we will have to promote them to handle the matter of Hungary, but not quite yet, it's okay. Um, I think we're finding our feet decently well. Okay, so it's a little bit of a short one, I do apologize, but that's all we've got for today. Uh, today, thank you all for hanging around, and we'll see you again real soon.